Hi everyone, today I've got a video showing you my completed recipe journal that I have created from this 1961 Betty Crocker cookbook. This is a ring binder cookbook that I have well and truly stuffed with vintage ephemera. Um, as you can see, it's in pretty bad condition and I think eventually I'm going to have to rebind it because you can see that the um, spine is really, really rough. Um, there's actually a lot of rust underneath in this metal part here. But otherwise, the front cover is this really cool 60s um, kind of style. It reminds me of like Mondrian, like that, like the squares and the rectangles. And on the back, you've got this really cool design um, as well with all of these like 60s foods. Um, now, everything in my journal, I think I mentioned this, but everything in the journal is 100% vintage ephemera. The only new things I've purchased obviously have been like the glue <laughs> to put it all together and the scrapbook. I bought one pad of scrapbook paper to create like the base pages and the pockets and things because um, it's really hard to find vintage cardstock. But otherwise, everything is vintage in here. So hopefully you enjoy it. I've collected this over about a year. I'm um, collecting my bits and pieces and I have so many more bits and pieces that I'm actually going to create a second cookbook. So let me show you what is inside this one. Here I have just um, covered the paste down pages in this cardstock. It's all one theme. I believe it was an Easter themed um, pack of paper, but it really went well. So I've, like I've said, well and truly overstuffed this that I can't actually put anything else into it. And if I try to open these, um, these rings everything falls out so <laughs> so yes it's very very full so I've kept the front cover here which is original I've just reinforced it with some cardstock but here it's got some pictures of the Betty Crocker offices from 1961 I've kept a lot of original pages especially these um, tabs the tab pages because it's really easy for me to flick to different types of um, foods because I actually use this as a recipe book to put my own recipes in so it's really handy um, as you can see I've got to be really careful with the pages because they're all ripping because of how full this is so we've got beverages here this was my um, now you'll notice that some of these you are like my first pages because this is my first journal I've ever made so the first pages tend to be a bit plain, but they get better as I go on. <laughs> so this was just my first page where I had this lovely ad that I didn't want to uh, rip up or cover. So it's simply just a piece of cardstock and this, um, the soda siphon, this soda siphon ad, which I think is really cool. And then I've just found this extra little um, piece of magazine clipping with some soda siphons. These here, this here is my kind of citrus themed page. All my pages are kind of themed. So this is a citrus themed page. It contains two uh, original ads for oranges. This one is so pretty and this one's really cool. It's got like, um, I think it's a man and a woman kind of dancing around because they've had an orange. <laughs> and this, um, this little, um, uh, I can't even use my words today. Uh, this little card here has been made out of a vintage Ladybird book page. Ladybird books have the most beautiful illustrations in them and they make perfect little cards. Um, so I've done that there. That's my citrus page. This here is one of three original Coca-Cola ads that I've collected from National Geographic magazines. This one here is from 1939. So it's my second oldest ad. And it actually advertises the New York World's Fair. And I just love the graphics in this one. And it's in a really good condition from being on the back of a National Geographic magazine. I got these magazines, I think, for about 50 cents each um, from a lady who was selling them on Facebook Marketplace. So I loved that. So I saved it and put it in here. This is my oldest Coca-Cola ad. This one's from about 1932, I believe. Um, and it's so lovely because it's got these two women who were shopping and then one of them has stopped to have a Coke and it said, a good idea is a pause for energy giving refreshment. So I thought it was cool. It's a little bit in, in a little worse condition um, than the last one, but I love that kind of like aging on it. It looks really cool. This page here is just another fruit themed page and I've just put in, um, in this little pocket, which is a vellum pocket. I have added a little piece of ephemera from a ladybird book. This pineapple here is one of the images from a ladybird book. 
I've got some fruit there and I've got this really cool um, uh, clipping from a textbook. It's a 1950s Australian textbook and it has these really cute little fruit store with all these posters and um, and these two ladies shopping. And sorry if you can see the ring light shadow with some of these more glossy pages. And here's my third Coca-Cola ad. Remember, we're still in the beverages section, so I've kept it drink themed. Um, this is a 1950s Coca-Cola ad and it's got these two um, kind of teenagers. It looks like they're on a bit of a date and they've got their sandwiches and their Coke. So I thought it was really cool. Brighten every bite with Coke. This page here. So these are all like I these are my first few pages. So they're not exactly um, they're not super um, embellished or anything but it, it gets into that a little bit later when I got a bit more brave about using my vintage ephemera so we've got an old ad for Milo and if you're Australian um, or maybe from Southeast Asia you'll know what Milo is and I found an old Lipton tea ad so I cut out the Lipton tea box and I've put my own re recipe for masala chai on there and if you open this little flap here, there's an old ad from the 1970s. This is probably the most new thing that's in this journal because everything's kind of 40s, 50s and 60s. But I really loved this ad um, made of condensed. It's a condensed milk ad and it's got these sherbets, which looked so yum. So I was like, I have to put this in and I have to try making that one day. So that's the end of... Ooh, that just sits in the little belly band there. And that's the end of my beverages section. And this page here, I don't even want to talk about this page. I don't like this page. It was like one of the first pages I did and I don't like the style of it. So <laughs> we're going to move on. Um, I haven't put anything in breads. I don't eat bread. So I haven't <laughs> really put much of, of there, any much um, ads of breads. But I've kept in the original pages. My goal, I mean, my idea was that I was going to make pages for every um, every tab here. But like I said, I've run out of room completely in this journal. I'm going to have to rebind it if I'm going to fit anything else in. So we're in the cakes section here. This is one of my favorite sections. We've got this um, 1930s. It came from a girl's annual. It's a recipe page from a girl's, yeah, a girl's annual. And it's for um, butterscotch icing. And it's got these three ladies here making a birthday cake. And then on the other side, I have added a pocket with this kind of like gingham fabric. And these are all pictures from uh, vintage. So we've got vintage magazines here, the Capri's Coco ad with an old ledger, a ledger paper book and another ledger paper from 1945 where I can put a recipe if I like, a bit of rickrack on there. Um, and I've got an old stamp. This stamp actually came from... Um, my own stamp collection. As a kid, I used to collect stamps and I went through my old stamp collection and found this um, produce food stamp. And this picture came from, I believe, a golden little golden book. This side, we've got some chocolate cake, a little chocolate cake um, ta uh, tag or card where I can put another recipe. I have distressed this paper myself with coffee. Another um, little die cut from a magazine and this is a 1920s um, ad for chocolate which was found in a National Geographic magazine so none of my items here are printables I've collected them all from the original source here's another page which I love it's got these cute girls here from um, a little golden book we've got some a recipe and a cake from a women's magazine this is also from the women's magazine it's an ad for sponge cake mix now this page here I've got a little tuck here where I've put this ad this was a huge ad for butter um, and I loved it but it was way too big to fit in here so I managed to cut it down and get the best bits so you can see it says butter icing and on the back I've just used an old recipe card and if I pull that out I've got this was um, a magazine page with like, it looks like a mum and daughter and she's cooked um, some muffins. This is from an old, um, I think it was a Butterick a sewing catalogue book. So um, I managed to die cut that and that took a while because I had to really be patient with my knife to get that out. Um, and this is an old Pyrex ad. I love vintage Pyrex. So whenever I find little Pyrex ads, I love them. Set of four for $2. I mean... Can you imagine if you could buy it for that price today? <laughs> this is another page from a little golden book. <clears throat> I love the look of that cake. 
Uh, here I've got a pocket and inside the pocket I've got a little tag and it's a um, it's a family and the mum's just made a cake and I've got a recipe for my homemade muesli bars on there. So I can put that back into its pocket. There's just a recipe in there. And this is an ad for Tala from 1959 and I just love the look of all of these this old kitchenware. Um, so I had to add that in there. And we turn the page. We've got this upside down pineapple cake. That's an original page from a recipe book. And again, from a magazine, I got that golden circle can. We've got this beautiful ad from an Aerofoss. I think it was an Aerofoss recipe book. Um, so oh, let's hope that's still, yeah, that's still recording. Um, that's from an Aerofoss recipe book. And I just love the colors and the cake looks so pretty. I think that was from 19, the 1940s, I believe. And on the back, so this is the whole ad is original. And on the back was this ad for Marmite. So although it doesn't really go in with cake, um, I loved this ad. So Marmite's like Vegemite, but it's like the British version. And to get better quickly, and they've made a broth out of Marmite. So I love that. This is a beautiful page from a um, another recipe book. I think it was a cake making book from the 1960s. I've made a little um, card here that I can put a recipe on, and that's got some um, it's got some instructions on how to ice a cake. And then this is just some um, cooking fat that I've stuck on there because I thought that the labeling was pretty cool. And I've got some more cards. So this is a nine from a 1960s girls annual and we've got some space on the back to put a recipe. Another Pyrex ad. I couldn't bear to cut this up. So I have just folded it in half and I haven't glued it or anything. So it's an original from the Women's Weekly. I can't tell from what year, but it's probably 60s. Um, and it's all of those Pyrex dishes that we know and love. And then this here is another card, another recipe card. Um, and it's an entry form for a uh, baking competition that was found from a 1964 women's, uh, women's magazine. And then on the back of all this is this beautiful coconut cake. How pretty is it on this blue tray? So I love that. This is an original page from the cooking book. Um, here, I love this page. So this was an ad for ovens. And I cut these beautiful ladies out and I put them in there like that. And then um, I've made a matching tag, which has got an oven on it. And on the back, we've got um, some ads from, I think, a Popular Mechanics magazine from the 50s and some old ledger paper or some old writing paper. And we've got an ad for uh, chicken leg quarters, it seems. <laughs> and that's just a vellum, um, a vellum pocket so you can see that as we're moving into the journal this is when I got a little bit more experimental and a bit more confident with making with cutting things up and doing things so I think my journal gets a bit more interesting from now on um, here we've got another pocket which is made of um, uh, another page out of a recipe book I've got another card here which has got an old ad for a mix master on it and a recipe card on the back so we stick that in there oh Maybe we'll show you her. <laughs> um, we've got this card here, which is another recipe card. It's got a family sitting at the dining table and another ad for Tala. Um, this was an uh, like a hand mixer. So we'll put them in there. She was um, a woman who actually won the Bake Off competition. So you know how I've got that page, the, the Bake Off entry form? On the same page, there was the winner of last year's Bake Off, which was this woman here. And so I put her in there because I thought she looked quite sweet. So we've put that in there. We've got oh, another original page from the Betty Crocker book. We've got a page on chocolate and I've got another recipe card there. These are all original from magazines. This gorgeous um, ad for Coco, Bourneville Coco. I think this was a 1940s ad. The colours are just so beautiful. And then I thought they went really well with um, with this old chocolate ad as well, which I've cut up here. And then I added the rest of the ad to the top. And then if we turn the open the flap, I've got a recipe card here, which is just washi taped on the top there. And it's a mum helping her um, kids to make I think they're making actually I think they're making play-doh <laughs> in this one because I remember that it was a ladybird book about like activities to do with kids and so I think they're making play-doh 
We've got an old ad for sugar and this ad for sugar cracks me up and I had to keep it in there um, is because it says you can make a host of wholesome foods from sugar. Sugar provides energy almost as soon as it is eaten. That's why kitties like sweet things. Their appetites naturally want the kind of food which supplies energy for their constant playing and running around. So <laughs> that's not the funny bit because it does say um, half of the sugar in Australia, blah, 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 blah. It makes biscuits, canned fruit, condensed milk, confectionery jam, ice cream, cordials, and many other healthy foods. So none of them are healthy foods. <laughs> and that's why I thought it was so funny. I was like, what a funny little ad. I'll keep that in there. I've got another card here, um, which is came out of a children's book called Pandora. And it was just this cute little children's book that had these two characters in it. But they're, she's got a rock melon and he's got a pear. And it's another recipe card. And I made a pocket here out of a Nestle Milky Bar ad and a Spangles ad as well. These are all from the 50s and 60s. And it's got the Macintosh's chocolate. And then this came from cha a child craft book. Actually, if you can get your hands on 1950s and 60s child craft books, they've got really cute graphics and illustrations in them. So this came from one of those pages. And I just thought she looked a bit creepy, but kind of cute. So we kept that in there. And that's how to make candy. We're onto the cookies section. I haven't got much in cookies. I've got this little page here that's got this um, recipe ad. And I put my dad's um, famous chocolate chip cookies because he uh, makes the best chocolate chip cookies. He makes the best chop chip. That my phone just turned off. Then <laughs> he makes the best chop chop chip cookies. So I had to put them in there, and um, they go into this little pocket here with an old um, self raising flower ad. And then on the back we've got an ad for carnation milk, and it was this lady and this little girl making um, a cake. I don't know what they're making, but the Betty Crocker had these original um, pages in there for cookies, like fondant cookies. And I just thought that was so cute. And I didn't get around to adding any pages on the back. So like I said, nothing else is going to fit in this journal. <laughs> this is a beautiful page. It's strawberry themed. So I've made everything strawberry. I collected as much strawberry ephemera as I could. I've got this beautiful strawberry sponge cake here, a little strawberry, um, panna cotta. We've got a little pocket here, which I don't think, no, I haven't put anything in there, but that's a page from a ladybird book. Hopefully you can see that. Yep. Um, and this is a postcard that I got from a woman in Russia. I used to do post crossing. If you don't know what post crossing is, definitely look it up if you like to collect, um, ephemera from all over the world. So I used to post cross and this was one of the cards that I received and, um, yeah, she just wrote a really nice little message for me and it was this beautiful card with a girl holding some strawberries and I've put some strawberries on the back as well. I love this page. I think this is one of my favourite pages. So it's all about like puddings and um, jellies and things. So these were all ads and this is when I, when I got really like, I was like, I don't even care. I'm just going to start layering things up. So I've layered this woman on top of here and it goes really well because she's kind of making a pink jelly and this was a jelly ad. So I thought that was really cool. This is an ad for mock cream and recipe on card on the back, which I've done in stamps. I'm not really like, I don't do distressing with distress ink or stamping or sewing. Like I don't, I don't really know how to sew <laughs> and I don't really like keep a lot of stamps and things so really my junk journals are a lot of gluing cutting and gluing which I love so it's more collaging um so I've got an ad for Nestle milk this lady was from this gelatin ad so they were kind of together but I cut them and made them separate so yeah love this one and this pocket is great because I'll be able to fit some more well I thought I'd be able to fit some more things in but probably not <laughs> some more original pages we're at the egg section I love curried egg sandwiches so I made this kind of like a curried egg page <laughs> she's got eggs and there's a little ad for Keen's curry and then I found this cool ad for Keen's curry powder as well so I might put a recipe for curried egg sandwiches but like who needs a recipe for curried egg sandwiches it's so easy to make and this is something I'm quite proud of this little fridge so there was this ad for this blue fridge and then I found another ad for a fridge and I made it so I could open the fridge up and there was the the contents of that fridge. So I was pretty proud of myself about that. I saw that 
in, uh, idea from someone else's journal and I had to copy it but it kind of is quite cool and it lays quite flat so I guess if you didn't know it opened you wouldn't know and then there's another Pyrex ad there as well she's from a little golden book this is an original page from the Betty Crocker cookbook this is my cereal page I find lots of cereal ads and I found this cute little son in a um in a vintage coloring in book so I cut him out and I made a little flap here and I did some collaging of cereals so these two are from a little golden books and this was an ad for Kellogg cereal another Kellogg cereal and then in the background was an ad for rice bubbles you can see snap crackle and pop and then on this side here where the sun is, you can see that we've got an ad for Vitabrits and Wheat Bix, which are two Australian cereals. And these are from the 1950s. And I thought the box for Wheat Bix and Vitabrits was so cute. So yeah, that's my cereal page. And then we've got another breakfasty page. So we've got this ad for soup and cheese. And I love this tag. I think I posted this on one of the journal groups when I was making it. it took me so long <laughs> because I was like kind of obsessed with how it like how I was layering everything. But all of these have come from different sources. That's an old Christmas card with I love the embossing on that. And then an old dictionary page, some old fabric and lace. And this girl, um, this woman was from a little golden book as well. And then if we take those out, we've got the background here which um, is, this was another ad for, I think it was an ad for potatoes or something. I can't remember. Um, some salt ad and some breakfast items there. We've got a little sardine on cheese. That was a cheese ad, that's right. <laughs> remember now. Put that like that. Um, another breakfast page, original from the book. And here's just a plain page that I made really early on making this journal plain it probably needs a bit more and it's got a nice little pocket here which I haven't added anything to now I haven't added anything to the main dishes section I didn't get around to it before I filled up this journal so we'll move along oh I love this part of my journal so this was like a pie themed page so kind of cherry themed although these are cranberries in the background <laughs> but we've got some cherry pie here We've got this ad, it says, free, how to be a good hostess. And that's a card that I've made to put in there. A little ad for cherry menthols. And then I've made a pocket here. And in the pocket is another um, ad for pie, uh, another picture of pies. And I can put a recipe on there if I so choose. But I think the colours and everything works really well. And then when you put this in, it kind of just makes it. I love that. Now, here's my other page. These are all a pie, still pie themed or fruit themed. Pies and tarts and things. I mean, we are in the pie section <laughs> of the book. So we've got a little card here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to put a recipe on there. It's just a small little card. It's a lady in a vintage kitchen. And then I've got this original ad for fruit sauce. So I couldn't bear to cut it up. So... I uh, just kind of folded it in and he kind of sits like that. And then I've got another card here, which has got some um, candied fruits and the, the cranberries on it. And that's another little card. And then a little ad for glacé cherries. And then here is a little pocket that is like a lever arch pocket. And inside the pocket, I've got two ads, one for person wear kitchen scales because I actually have a set of vintage person wear scales in my kitchen. So I had to keep this ad. <laughs> and this is an ad for a Kenwood Chef. Um, Kenwood Chef. So I thought that was really cool too. And they're all inside this little pocket here that I've made. Which has got um, another woman from the from that um, Butter, butter wick. Oh, I can't remember the sewing catalog um, and um, this kind of blurry picture of these tart mixtures. And then on the back, we've got oops, we've got this uh, lemon meringue pie recipe card, and then an ad for custard. Um, and I've put a little custard packet on the top, I've glued that on, and a pastry mixture um, ad. And then that just kind of sits in that little tuck there. And then I've got this cute little tiny envelope, this little apple envelope. And when you open it up, 
there is, I don't know if you can see that because it's glossy, but there is a little lady here with grapes in her basket and inside the envelope is a little recipe card which I can write on later with these um, with peaches here which are super cute so put that back in there the envelope is actually made from an old encyclopedia page on apples we've got another little um, tuck here and We've got another recipe card. It's a girl eating some peaches. And underneath we've got a little collage of fruits. And then on the side I created this pocket here, a little envelope pocket. And inside it's just got an ad for <laughs> short crust pastry for all of these types of pastry um, and pies you can create because we're still in the pie section. And I fold it like this and it becomes like this. And I just st stick that in that little envelope there. And that is a apricot pie or peach pie. I'm not too sure. And then here we've just got some, some ads and um, a pineapple ad. And then I stuck a little die cut of the pineapple tin on there with an ad from a Spangles, um, Spangles candy advertisement. Now, I loved this ad. This was a Betty Crocker um, ad, which I didn't know that before Betty Crocker was called Betty Crocker in Australia, it was called Betty Sydney. So you can't see it on here, but that doesn't say Betty Crocker. It says Betty Sydney, but it's all the same branding as a Betty Crocker. So there must have been some kind of trademark issue in the 60s. But yeah, this is, was an ad for Apple Meringue Pie. It was a really big ad, like bigger than A3, and I couldn't fit it in. So I cut it up so that you could kind of see the apple pie um, and then this was at the bottom of the ad, so I made that as a belly band so I could fit things in. And then this is just a magazine clipping. It says, come into our kitchen and cook happily ever after. So that was really cute. I'm, mean, I'm meaning to turn that into a card. Salads. We've got an old ad for canned meat, like tin meat. I guess it's like a spam. But I just liked the look of that salad. I thought it looked pretty vintage and cool. An original page from Betty Crocker book. And then I've got an ad for, this was a, this is a big recipe, so it's nothing special about this. It's Jamie Oliver's mushroom and asparagus risotto, which is actually really yum, by the way, look it up. <laughs> um, but it's a big recipe with a lot of method instructions, so I haven't made that pretty. Um, and then it's, that just sits in here uh, behind, in sorry, in front of these little kids going through the pantry. <laughs> and if I turn it over, there is a whole ad for Golden Circle salad recipe using golden circle beetroot and pineapple and then here's another ad this was from the 1940s i believe for um just an ad for summer dishes we've got another recipe card here pretty plain and simple i liked the picture on there it was um like just a mother and son and she's cutting up bread it looks like and he's running into the kitchen so i thought it was really cute and then this is a page on salad, craft cheddar page on salad. And I found this app actually the other day and I it's similar where it's so beautiful that I don't want to do anything with it. I just want to keep it in there. So it's an ad for Rosella Pickles from the 1950s. And it's just so pretty. So I've simply folded it up and I keep it nicely tucked in there. And then if we turn the page, this is just another ad from a, um, sorry, not ad. It's another page from a, a girl's annual. But as you can see, I made this one quite early on, like without this. It was just this page. And I, um, I stuck it upside down. So <laughs> there you go. There's all these little mistakes you make when you're starting out. But it adds to the charm. We've got some more original pages. Haven't been able to add much to that. This is a lovely page. It's all tomato themed, tomato sauce themed. So I've got a little scales here with some tomatoes, an old craft spaghetti, um, spaghetti die cut. This is another page from a ladybird book. I think it was a ladybird book on food. If you can get your hands on this book, it's so good because the colors and the pictures are fantastic. So that's in there. This is my favorite ad. I think it's my favorite ad in the entire journal. And it's for Rosella tomato sauce, which is an Australian brand of tomato sauce. It's not in very good condition, 
But look at all the faces. It says, first choice of the people, Australia's best-selling tomato sauce. Americans, you'd know tomato sauce as ketchup. It's the same thing. We say tomato sauce. Um, so it's this really long ad. And it's got all these beautiful faces on it. And I loved it. So I put it on some scrapbook paper and um, keep it like that. And then on the back, you've got some Rosella tomato sauce spaghetti and a little Tabasco. Is Tabasco even made of tomato? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's red, so it went on there. This is an ad for Heinz ketchup. I cut the hands out and they're sitting on top of this ad for old stoves and some mustard. So this could be like a hot dog page or something. <laughs> this is a really, really cute picture. Um, I don't know if you can see that. There you go. Hopefully you can see that. So it's a, a mother and she's opened the fridge. Although it looks like the fridge is sitting on the wall, which is weird. <laughs> and she's got a soda out. Um, and that's a flip. And then when I flipped that over, this was one of the first, like, fancy pages I made. So the glue didn't work very well, but that's okay. Um, we've got a lady here who's tasting something from her stove. We've got um, some pictures here of some vegetables. And this was an ad for a recipe book, which I've turned into a little recipe tag. We'll close that. We're almost finished. Oh, we've got this ad for OXO. OXO is like a stock powder. It says OXO gives a meal man appeal. And you've got this lady who's prepared a roast. Um, and he's like, I want that. <laughs> so that was really kind of cute. We've got another ad. It was a, um, a cooking course, which was in the Australian House and Garden from 1959. And it's a recipe page again, a recipe card again. And I put a little um, ad for HP sauce. And I've got some HP ketchup there as well. Um, and some old spice uh, containers. Well, flour, tea, coffee and sugar. And then on this page here, we're almost done actually. I think this is my second last page. We've got a card, another recipe card. Um which has got a family having dinner. And I think this is from a Ladybird book of prayers. So it had a prayer on the back, but I just put a recipe card on the back. And this was an ad for kitchens. Look at this kitchen. It's like got this huge um, watermelon picture. I love it. I just love this the look of this kitchen. So I made a whole card based on that. And then we've got a little chutney jar die cut there. If you're looking for any of these die cuts, by the way, I sell them in my Etsy store. I copied a lot of them, like I scanned a lot of them before I use the originals in my journal so you can actually print them out. Um, and then this was an old ad for tomato soup. And I love just the, the pitch, just the whole way it is. I just loved it. I like hands being in the pictures. It gives like a lot of movement. This was a 1920s ad for Campbell's vegetable soup. Again, one of the first pages that I made. You can tell these pages are so plain. I need to add more to them. This is one of the first ones. And this is an ad for sifter table salt because it used to come in all of these like bright colours. And I just thought it was really cute. Six gay colours. I thought it was just the cutest ad with this little sailor man here. Um, and a, and a, um, a little old picture of a, a, um, a kitchen. And some some gingham paper here and then I'm pretty sure that is it so we've just got some of the last original pages and then that's the end of my journal so I know this video went on for a while but if you're still here thank you so much for watching definitely like and subscribe if you want to see more because I'll be showing my travel journal off next um, which is kind of halfway finished it's my Europe travel journal um, and that contains you know my own travel ephemera like tickets and things that I've collected so if you're interested in seeing that do um, stay tuned um, otherwise thank you so much for watching I know 30 minutes watching someone else's journal and listening to me ramble on is probably um, you know you got to be pretty you got to concentrate <laughs> you got to have a big attention span so thank you and um, yeah definitely visit my Etsy store if you want to pick up any vintage ephemera I sell everything I don't use I sell on there um, and if you're looking for vintage cooking ephemera, I've always got cooking packs available there as well. So thank you so much. And I hope you have a lovely day and happy journaling.